Hello everyone. This video would focus on graphing cubic equation in vertex form and this is the first part. In this part, our value for A is positive 1 and the other example would be a negative 1. Before we go farther, please feel free to check out the description box below for the link of the other series of topics related to graphing cubic equation in vertex form. Before we jump into this example right here, let's have a review on the basics of graphing cubic equation in vertex form. We remember that the vertex form or the graphing form of a cubic function is given in an equation y equals a quantity x minus h cubed plus k. Now let's look at the effects of the parameters a, h, and k to the graph. So this is the graph of a cubic equation. So we remember that this graph has two tail ends. The other end is pointing upward while the other end is pointing downward. Now we remember that if A is positive, the right end of the graph is facing upward. Now when A is zero, the graph is a horizontal line. Whenever the A is negative, the left tail end of the graph is directed upward. Now, we also remember that this parameter A is called a stretch factor. It causes the graph to be vertically stretched, which, make, which makes it narrower, or it makes the graph horizontally compressed, which makes it wider. Now, we remember that the closer the value of a is to zero, the wider the graph becomes. So if you notice, we started from the negative end or in the negative side and we're approaching zero right now, the graph becomes wider and wider to the point that at zero, it becomes a horizontal line. And that is true on the other side as well. So if we start from 10, we go to 0, we're, we're, um, we're making the value of A closer to 0, then the graph becomes wider and wider up to a point that at 0, it becomes a horizontal line. On the contrary, the farther the value of A from 0, then the graph becomes narrower and narrower. So as you can see, it becomes narrower right there. Now, if we start from zero, we go the other way. It becomes narrower and narrower as we go farther from zero. Now, we also remember that the coordinate h, k is the vertex or the locator point of the graph where our h translates the graph left or right while our k translates the graph up or down Okay, going back to the problem right here, we're supposed to sketch the graph for this. The first step is to determine the vertex or the locator point. So I'm going to go ahead and write it down here. To determine the coordinates of the vertex, we remember that it is equal to h and k. And this number represents our h and this represents the k. The trick to determine the coordinates would be switch. So that comes out negative 1. And keep the sign that would be a positive 2. So this is where our vertex is going to sit. The second step is to create and complete the table of values. So I'm going to go ahead and create the table of values down here. We are going to place our vertex or locator point in the middle of this blank cell. So that would be negative 1 and 2 here. So we can go ahead and um, complete the x values right here. So we can go down to negative 2 and then negative 3, go up to 0 and then positive 1. Our next task here is to show the work so that we can determine the y values for these blank spaces here. So I go ahead and show the work for x is 0, we determine what the y value is. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. x is equal to 0, so what we would do is we will copy this equation, but instead of writing x, we're going to put 0 to it. So this is how it's going to look like. So I put in the 0 down here, and so this would come out. 0 plus 1 is 1, and then that's cubed plus 2. 1 cubed means 1 times 1 times 1. That would be 1 plus 2 is 3. So the value that we're going to have here would be 3. 
Now I'm going to show the work when x is negative two. So I'm gonna put that work um, on the other side right here, x is negative two, and we will solve for the y. Okay, so what I did here was I plugged in the negative two to the x, and then I copied everything, and so negative two plus one is negative one. Negative one cubed means negative one times negative one times negative one, and that gives us a negative one, and then we have a plus two, so that comes out a positive one. So I'm gonna go ahead and write it down here, it comes out positive one. Now we will determine the value for y when x is one and when x is negative three, and I'm going to show that work on the side down here. Okay, so the value that we have when x is 1 is going to be 10 because we have a 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 cubed means 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, plus 2 is 10. The same thing for this, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 2 cubed, and that is equal to negative 8. Negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. So these are the two values here. So this would come out 10, and this would be negative 6. The third step is to sketch the graph of this equation. So we're going to start with the vertex, which is on negative one and two so that's negative one it goes up to two so this is the first dot the second dot is zero and three so zero it goes to three so it's gonna go up here and then one goes to ten so all the way to ten up here and then we have a negative two it's gonna go down to positive one so it's gonna sit right here and the negative three is gonna go to negative six. So this is the dot right here. So we go ahead and sketch the graph. So this is the graph of this equation right here and we call this as a cubic graph. Now please notice that this left tail of the graph is gonna go towards the negative infinity on the x-axis. And this one is gonna go towards the positive infinity on the positive x-axis. This tells us that our domain for this would be all real numbers, while the range that we're gonna have here is at the same time, it's gonna go up to infinity, and it's gonna go down to infinity, and so this tells us that it's also gonna be all real numbers. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that up here. Now let's move on to the next example. At this time, I would encourage you to pause this video and try this problem out on your own. And when you're done, unpause it and check your answer. Okay, so we go over the problem here. Again, the first step is to determine the locator point or the vertex. So I'm gonna go ahead and write it down here. Again, we remember that the coordinate of the locator point or the vertex is h, k. The trick to write the coordinate would be switch the sign of this, so that would be a positive 2, and keep the sign of this, that would be a negative 1. So it's going to be sitting at 2, negative 1. The next step is to create and complete the table of values. I'm going to go ahead and write the table of values down here. We are going to place the locator point in between these uh, boxes, so that would be 2 and negative 1. So we can go ahead and write 3 here to complete the x values, and then 4, so we go ahead and go down to 1 and 0. So we go ahead and determine the rest of the values here. So I'm going to show the work on the side here. We start with x is equal to 1, and we're supposed to determine the value of y. So what we do is we copy everything, but we are going to change this x into 1. So this comes out, and so we put in the 1 right here. So this would come out, negative of 1 minus 2 is negative 1. So I write negative 1 right here, that's cubed, and then that's minus 1. So this tells us that if we have a negative of Negative 1 cubed means negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. This gives us a negative 1. And then that's minus 1. And so negative of a negative is a positive 1 minus 1. So the value here is 0. So I'm going to go ahead and write 0 down here. Now we determine the value of y when x is 3. I'm going to go ahead and show that work on the side right here. The value that we have here is negative 2. The reason for that is we have a 3 minus 2 is positive 1. 
positive one cubed means positive one times positive one times positive one is a positive one. Negative over positive one is a negative one minus one is negative two. Now we are going to show the rest of the numbers here when x is zero and when x is four on this side down here. Okay, please notice here that we have a zero minus two is negative two. Negative two cubed means negative two times negative two times negative two is a negative eight. Negative of negative eight is a positive eight. Subtracted from one, we got seven. That's how we got the seven right here. And we also have here four minus two is a positive two. Positive two times positive two times positive two is a positive eight. We have a negative of a positive eight is negative eight minus one is negative nine. That's how I get the value here. And so the last step that we're gonna do is to sketch this graph. So we start with a vertex that would be on two and negative one. So it's gonna sit right here. That's gonna be two on negative one. So one, two, negative one. Next is one, it goes to zero. So it's gonna sit right here. And then we have a zero goes to seven. So it's going to go up all the way up there. And then we have three goes to negative two. So this is negative two down here and four goes to negative nine. And so we go ahead and sketch the cubic graph. Now, please notice that the tail of this graph would go towards the negative infinity on the x-axis and towards the positive infinity on the x-axis. And at the same time, it will go all the way up and all the way down to infinity. And so we go ahead and say that the domain and range for this, both of them would be all real numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and write that information up here. Did you get the same answers as this? Yeah. Good. Perfect. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya!